Hello, it is early October 14th at 6 a.m. 2014. I'm here at the Cheshire County House of Corrections, uh, otherwise known as the Keen Spiritual Retreat, where my friend Rich is in a cage. I'm here to pick him up. Yay! Which is one of like, the happiest days on earth. You know, uh, there's like your wedding day, your child's birth, and the day you get let out of jail. <laughs> They're all like think pretty up there so got some support hey buddy hey and so Ian has just pushed this button and like sounds like they communicated who are you here for rich Paul and then hopefully he'll be coming through these uh, Racehorse gates here. Excuse me. Yeah. What, what are you filming? I'm filming my buddy getting out of the clink. All right, my son's gonna be coming out. I don't want him being filmed. Well, I can't guarantee whether he ends up on our cameras or not. Here's our buddy right now, but we won't put your son on YouTube. That helps oh, any. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Hey, bud. Back. Well, thanks. Well, see you again. Ah. Oh. Hey, Derek. <laughs> hey, what's up, dude? What's going on, Good to see you, Thanks. Welcome home. Oh. Got time, man. Oh, yeah. Ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. All right. Oh, God, that cigarette smells good. Yeah, uh, okay, do I want to start smoking again? No, no, no. Don't do it, buddy. I do and I don't. You don't. Oh, what the hell? We got something else for you. Ah. <laughs> 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 I'm a bad man. Uh, I'm probably gonna nice fall out my grenade. face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, now on to the heroin. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, no more probation, right? Yeah. It's over. Yeah, well, probation isn't the main reason I didn't do heroin. But <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's good to have you back, brother. It's good to be back. <laughs> Where's the uh, vehicle? Right here. Right in style today. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't see a cruiser. <laughs> Wait, where the hell is David? He, didn't, he couldn't make it. His car was having trouble. David Crawford uh, sends his best. <laughs> Who does? David Crawford. Oh, groovy. Is that car trouble? Yeah. I was going to get the door for you here, Rich. You can, Rich, sit, up here. You can oh, sit up okay. front. What's, uh, I throw my oh yeah, that's right. I'll, I'll pop the trunk for you. You've got a full, a full ride. So you ran Jody off. <laughs> You're supposed to wait until I was out. <laughs> I never got to meet Close you. enough. <laughs> What's the plan? I, I am, but I was thinking we might reconvene on the square and get slightly hungrier before we hit the restaurant if everybody's down. If you're interested, sure. Ooh. I'm prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Timo's is open at 6. Cool. Oh, so no, man. no, uh, no probation, right? It's over. No probation, no nothing. I got, uh... <laughs> Well, I've still got suspended sentences. Okay. How long uh, did that run for? Uh, like six years. Oh, wow. Yeah, those okay. are... They got you on the hook. Yeah. They're probably going to have me on the hook here pretty soon, too. I got uh, sentencing in two days. Oh, really? So yeah. you did get convicted? Yeah, on both charges. And did you do a trial de novo? Not yet. I'm going to if there's too much jail time involved in the sentence. Otherwise, oh, okay. I'm take it. Huh. I'm expecting definitely suspended sentences and maybe jail time. I really don't know what they're going to do. Okay. Uh, who's representing it? Just me. Just you? Okay. I would probably do a trial de Nova just on general principle. But... Generally I would, but the last time I did that, they hit me harder with a sentence when I got found guilty, even though I beat one of the two charges de Novo. Um, really? My sentence was 50% harsher. See, that's something, and especially it's good that you're finding out your sentence before trial de novo. Yeah. Um, that 
is something that I think is a ripe issue for appeal because you have a constitutional right to due process of law, and when they do that shit, they're really they're imposing a penalty for exercising your right to due process of law, and that seems uh, hinky at best. Um, nice car, Derek. Thanks, man. Rocking the Beamer. <laughs> So I, I personally think that doing that is, uh, is or should be held to be unconstitutional. Um, especially, there's some argument with a, plea be- with a plea deal that, oh, we're being exceptionally lenient with you because you took the plea deal. And, right. Which and, I wasn't offered. Yeah, and, and I was. So yeah. that, that was what they said about me when I brought up this objection in court. And with a plea deal, I don't think it's necessarily a strong enough case to uh, to take take the appeal. But with a trial de novo, I think it is because that's you know part of the process, and especially because you've never been offered a plea deal. That's uh, yeah. I figure if it's a if it's a jail sentence. Oh, then, big is uh, a. I got a joint rolled up too. Oh, um, true. I figure if it's a jail sentence that's lengthy, then I will appeal to the de novo trial. Yeah. And I'll probably bring um, uh, some lawyer in for the jury trial. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, see, the other thing is, I think you've got a strong, because it's a jury trial, I think you've got a. Are you smoking these days? I am, but I'll pass on this one. Oh, okay. Oh, and Renee does not. Like I say, I think you've got a strong uh, possibility of getting acquitted by a jury just on the basis of, you know, every married woman has had to use their maiden name for something after they got married to access an old bank account, some shit like that before the paperwork came through. And that's exactly what you did, is you used your, you know... The problem is I also uh, got a Florida license in my old name after I uh, put in the name change in, <laughs> in New Hampshire. And so it okay. doesn't look very good. <laughs> well, that... Okay, yeah, that could be could be considered evidence, but you went also of your own accord and changed your name with New Hampshire, right? That's correct. Okay, so basically... You know, this is this is an issue that, that you already cl- corrected on your own initiative. Yeah, I definitely did um, jump through their hoops after I realized the police were interested in this. Oh, okay, it was after the police started making noise? Oh, the rocks? Yeah, I'm at a red light. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of complicated, but... Uh, I mean... I didn't think they'd be able to get me on both of the charges because I didn't think they could prove I knowingly did those things, but the fact that I went and I got that Florida license probably helped prove knowingly. The other thing is the fact that you got that uh, Florida license might not be admissible because it's a prior uncharged bad act. It wasn't prior, it happened uh, after the police, it happened after I went and I uh, put in the name change in New Hampshire. Right, but I'm saying it, when I say prior by a bad act, I mean prior to the to the trial. Like it's, they yeah. can't say not only did Mr. Freeman kill his roommate, but we think he also killed his other roommate. When you haven't been charged with that um, yeah. and convicted of that, because that is uh, considered more prejudicial than probative. Um, yeah, to well, say that you've committed another probably, crime. A lawyer would probably be able to make a better argument on that than I would. Yeah, uh, but he, 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 would ob- he would object yeah. to it. On, I, th- I think that would be inadmissible but under, under ad- the rules of evidence. It probably would be admissible because the very same state police who were investigating me also investigated that and ultimately confiscated that license from me. Um, even though, essentially, they threatened to search my house over this, Rich. Yeah, I, I heard about that. Are you good? I'm good, thank you. This is um, very tasty. Which I obviously did not want them to do. So it's from yeah. California. Um, mm. I hand that over. Did but it was move interesting. for the Free State Project? Uh, yes. 
Yes. <laughs> Good for it. <laughs> Helping to bring freedom to New Hampshire. <laughs> okay. So a parent or an anarchist walks into a bar with a parrot on his head. Bartender says, where the fuck did you get that mangy thing? Parrot says, New Hampshire, there's thousands of them. <laughs> <laughs> KPD. 10-4. Oh, you're out, you're out just in time for Pumpkin Fest, by the way. Right? Yeah, this four days weekend. left. They've got it up on the board at the jail. They've had, they've been running a countdown for uh, the last two months to Pumpkin Fest. What's the point? <laughs> it's like <laughs> overtime they Christmas. They can't attend? Huh? They're counting down to an event they can't attend? Yeah, well, I think they're being prepared for, they usually get uh, 100 to 120 arrests that night, so I assume that uh, there's uh, preparation going on at the jail uh, for that. I see what you mean, yeah, okay. I thought you meant the prisoners were counting down. No, the, not the prisoners, the guards. Mm. It's up in booking, which is probably the only part of the jail most of those people will see. Oh, wow. So what's the uh, what's the latest gossip? Who's in? Who's out? Who's here? Who's gone? We lost Josie. I already knew that one. Yeah. She claims she's coming back. She'll be hosting the new movers panel at Keenvention. So Great. that'll be interesting to have someone hosting a new movers panel who has moved away. But yeah. Will come back. She says she'll come back, and I think the fact that she's going to appear on stage saying she'll come back mm -hmm. hopefully will help her actually come back. Yeah, we might want her, because she wasn't here very long, we might suggest that she put it as, I visited for a while and I'm getting ready to move. <laughs> well, she moved. She was living here. Yeah. But, you know, that doesn't mean she's not a new mover. She moved. True. Uh, uh. True, and if nothing else, maybe she'll be able to talk about some things that she could have been better prepared for. Than... It might not be bad if she talks about some things that she could have been better prepared for. Oh, that right. Ah, uh, yes. You inconsiderate motherfucker, if you denied me getting the fucking shot of Prince's first hit of weed as you got out of jail. Well, that's I okay. didn't get shot. <laughs> Pictures or it didn't happen. <laughs> Alright, we're here in Central Square, the infamous location where the 420 celebrations happened so many years ago and continue every now and then here. Yeah. Well, all right then. And, uh, just to make it official, we smoke these in remembrance of lost liberties. We hope for a day when the people don't fear the government. The government fearing the people will be a step on the way for re revolutionaries. So. Just consider that a waypoint. <laughs> They'll fear us before they're removed from office. <laughs> so, how was your stay in the spiritual retreat? This time <laughs> Not too bad. I really missed mail to jail. Um, mail to jail rocks, and when it's when it's absent, you really feel that absence in there. Oh, I bet. I know that the uh, the operator of Mail to Jail sounded like, it seemed like he could use some help, but he wasn't willing to ask for it. Well, I happen to be a computer programmer, yeah. so I may well be able to fix that shit for him. Maybe we should have uh, NH Jury I, take it over or something like that. It's possible. If NH Jury would be willing to, then I think that would be, uh, that would be groovy. And actually... I think it was a Drupal site. Do you do Drupal? I don't do Drupal, but the site is so simple, especially when there's only one or two people in jail, that I can build it out of the whole cloth very quickly. It might not be as as fancy and funky as uh, as their oaks was, but the whole thing can be done server side. There's no JavaScript. It's uh, 
it's pretty easy shit. Um, Drupal's a fucking nightmare in my book. I don't, oh, I I'm it. not a fan of PHP, and it. I'm not a fan of, of PHP. There were a couple of people, free staters, who were pushing that shit really hard, and they got a lot of free state sites on that shit. But, uh, Webmasters I need, I need dare to stay off Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> Drupal developers suggest Drupal for fucking job security. I, the the yeah. company I was working yeah. with in New York, they um, they were sucks. originally put on a Drupal site by some fucking geek who was like, yeah, use Drupal because you could do so much more with it. And they didn't need to do shit. They just needed to display a bunch of shit. I was like, here, WordPress, five minutes. Yeah. Bleh. yeah. Well, that's the thing. You can save a lot of time with Drupal, but with a lot of, it's true of a lot of ill-considered solutions in the computer business that what saves you time on the front end will cost you time on the back end when you try to maintain it or you try to do something that the authors never thought of. Maintaining a WordPress site is fucking nada, right? Yeah. It's, you know, you are not going to be yeah. able to do certain things with WordPress that you can do with Drupal. It's certainly true that Drupal is like a more, like, yeah. you know, you, you certainly have more capacity, but you also you can do need more capacity to do it. Yeah. <laughs> right, can, yeah, exactly. Let me just write my fucking, yeah. what, let me just write my fucking website program. assembler and then everything will be fine, right? <laughs> I can do well, whatever I want. <laughs> I mean, HTML and uh, through a Perl gateway with some CGI is easy as pie. And the mail to jail site doesn't have to be complex. And it, it doesn't even have to be as complex it is, as it is, because you don't even really need the access old letters area to make it a functional site, right. which removes the need for any kind of login at all. You can make it a completely state free site with the exception of the CPI. So, I mean, there's really very little to it. And I'm more of a engine programmer than I am a web programmer. I right. mean, I, I was writing artificial intelligence engines and shit, so I know coding you better than I know web. Are you trying so, to end the human race and bring Terminators to life? Uh, yeah, well, artificial <laughs> stupidity is, you know, a less... Uh, we don't have anything to fear about being outsmarted by artificial intelligence anytime soon. That uh, uh, no. maybe someday, Computers but the are hard getting part is, and people are where getting the dumber, fuck buddy. Do you, I mean, <laughs> where do you send uh, out for a bucket of volition? Because these things are going to have to have volition before they even want to do anything they haven't been told to do. You think stoners are lazy? Look at an artificial intelligence with no program. It's just going to sit there and go <laughs> until somebody sells it. Okay, now we want you to take over the world, you know? Right. Then it's... And, you know, there's just nobody would tell a computer to do that. the equivalent of a human, uh, a human general. So the question is, have you written in uh, a fucking uh, artificial intelligence that's even better than your best general? And it's hard to make good generals. Ask them at West Point, you know? Uh, it takes years of experience for a human, so... Well, that's true, but at the know. same time, like, you could feed in, like, all sorts of data, right? You could feed it in you all sorts of data it. and be like, make a decision based upon the data, right? And all the data is bullshit history, right? All the data yeah. is, government saved the world, right? We killed a bunch of people and that had a better okay. outcome, right? Now you what got a computer, all that information, and we're like, here, let your fucking militarized well, robots do this. For one thing, if you fed it all this information that assumes that Keynesianism is true, and then set it loose on the economy and give it all power, which is basically what you would do, what you would see Zeitgeist. is artificial stupidity running the economy into a brick fucking wall. Right? If they actually operated through Keynesian theory, they would fucking... Uh, they would implode because the solution to something bad having happened in Keynesianism is, oh, oh my God, make something worse happen. Right, right. You know? When in doubt, break the world <laughs> And I think that we've got more computer programmers like Peter Joseph than we do like Rich Paul. And that fucking terrifies me. <laughs> you know? Well, the thing is, we've got 
I think it would be brilliant if somebody wrote a, a fully formed simulation of the economy based on uh, on uh, Austrian theory. You know, that would be a beautiful thing. And the way to do it is to model it just like the actual economy, which is an artificial agent system where every agent in the system, because you're simulating a free market and you're taking fucking, uh, you know, wishy-washy uh, uh, you're simulating only homo economists, the economic man. You're not actually having to simulate humans. Uh, you know, and so basically you give it to start with just one directive, seek profit. Okay? And, and that's all the economy is, is a bunch of profit-seeking, independent, intelligent agents. And it was when I read The Wealth of Nations and I realized that, that I said to myself, holy shit, if I was writing an AI engine to run the economy, that's exactly what I would use, is profit-seeking <laughs> independent agents. And that's exactly what a free market is. And I was like, holy shit, if the economy was a computer program, that's how I would have designed it. And the rest of the Wealth of Nations was a breeze because I just looked at it as a data processing problem. And well, so then sure. I came along and read Van, Von Hayek and I said, oh, okay, somebody's already noticed that I don't need to publish it because Hayek's stuff, Hayek's best stuff was talking about how information travels in a, in a, in a free economy. And the that's, it's all information flow, you know? They, they say that, uh, you know, amateurs talk about, uh, about strategy and professionals talk about logistics. Well, that's how you do the logistics of... Well, it's still a really interesting analogy, right? Like, yeah. to, if, if, like, you're gonna write oh, a computer geez. program to run an economy, it's everyone <laughs> seeks profit, you know? Everyone yeah. seeks to gain, right? Yeah. And, and if everyone is seeking to gain, then everyone presumably will, you know, at some point along the uh, along the line. It's an interesting, uh, yeah, it's an I've interesting analogy. Whereas the people theology. that talk about computers running the economy is actually people saying like, "Hey, nobody should gain. Everybody." Yeah. Bah. But the thing is, in order to make, there are people I think who are more or less profit based called the Venus Project. That's who, exactly. uh, <laughs> they are um, not. They are anti profit. They are anti private well, property. That's the Venus Project. That's what I'm talking about. Peter Joseph, right? That's oh, that guy's guy. They're a crazy guys. bunch. Really it's fucking bunch of lunatics who, uh, who hey, for in large part, blend in really well in libertarian circles because they're like, hey, I don't like war. I don't like the war on drugs. Yeah, I don't the like that. Terrible. Yeah. Then they're like, oh, but by the Ooh, way, you shouldn't so own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't like money. Yeah. You shouldn't own things. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, and it should all be controlled but, by a computer. But yeah. Everyone should live in concentric circles. Even well, that's why, it's, that's why it's so interesting, right? Because so, like, we've got, like, the Peter Joseph, Zeitgeist, Venus Project people who are like, hey, uh -huh. anti-private property, it's Karl Marx repackaged, right? What I found amazing about what he said, he's like, if I'm going to write a computer program to program an economy, it's just all the actors within it seek profit, right? Which is right. the exact opposite of this computer-run economy that the Zeitgeist, right. Venus Project people talk about. And actually... You know, you could give a very simple instruction, which is, hey, yeah. everybody just try to benefit yourself, you know, and actually then yeah. you're going to have a better economy because everybody's going to benefit themselves and each other in the process. And Except here's what's difficult. There's one module to this fucking program that I haven't been able to write yet, and that's the one mm -hmm. that cares, the one that distinguishes between greater values and higher values because that requires a human value system. That requires hug, plugging a human into the into the system and reading his heart because the heart is involved in a lot of economic decisions and until you can simulate that, you can't simulate the driving force behind a if we the driving force behind the the economy. You know, people do things because they care about them. Well, what makes them care? And then you've come back to the same problem of artificial intelligence and, 
in the first place is I will always care better than a computer and therefore the, the recourse to my value system cannot be replaced by a computer. Right, a computer program um, is not going to understand <laughs> that people want to buy fucking romance novels, right? It's never going exactly. to understand shit like that. And without understanding that, because everything comes down to sex according to Darwinism, get laid or die. Right. Is the way of the world. Well, get laid and die, but you know, well, get laid you know, and die, get laid leave, and die, and but leave, leave a genetic sample your, behind, you know, procreation behind and us, and so therefore, you know, we're we're evolving through all this, and it's necessary. One of the problems with the welfare state is it makes it possible for everybody to breed without the requirement to survive economically, and. If everybody breeds without the need to survive economically and to win a mate, a mate in an economic system where success is good, where if success ceases to be a survival characteristic, if anything but being on welfare and pushing out as many puppies as you possibly can becomes a better survival characteristics and what you have is the fall of the Roman Empire and the plebes vote themselves bread circuses and Obamacare until they run all the productive people out of business with taxes and then and then we've either reached John Maynard Keynes long run and we're all dead or the system falls down around our fucking ears there is a correction for socialism it's economic collapse because you fly in the face of the laws of economics and it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Mother Nature is going to fuck you up if you mess with her for too long. And the laws Mother of Nature economics are all part of that because they're mathematical. It doesn't say that the biggest, mar the biggest player in the game will always be economically rational. It says that the economically rational will become the bigger player in the game. Right, and as soon as they're and, economically irrational, and, then they yes, will cease to exactly. be. So, and they will A company goes crazy and, and loses all its money. That we exercise the death penalty for corporations, well, they seem to, uh, and that's bankruptcy, where you're cut <laughs> into pieces and your in component parts are sold for their scrap value, basically, <laughs> and the money doesn't go to the people who are running the company, it goes to the creditors of the people, of the, uh, of, of the, uh, people the, company. the company. Did because the company the, uh, has been put out of its fucking misery because it's in the business of destroying value and nobody can keep doing that for a long time. So you okay, observe that the corporations tend to lose their, their marbles the, more, the larger they get? Yeah, I mean, the, the tragedy of the fucking financial collapse and our fail to, failure to let the market work is that it became not survival of the fittest, but survival of the fattest. Where if you become a big enough player to the point where you're unmanageable, the natural market reaction to that is to put you the fuck out of business. And that's exactly what happened in 2007. I was working for Citibank at the time. And the, the hand of nature came to put it out of business and the, and the government like a indulgent mother stepped in between the market correction and the market players and said, oh no, we're going to give you your money back. You, you get a do-over because you're so big that we're afraid of what would happen if you fail. Well, the problem is if you're so dependent on some big company that your economy is going to fail if they fail, then your economy is big at do a, is do a big ass correction and that system that correction should come specifically by that too big company to fail company ceasing to exist because if you're too big to fail you're too big to manage well I because eventually you'll stop seeking profit and start seeking political gains are you hungry Yes. Oh, oh, am I hungry? <laughs> I would issue a correction. Yeah, we can walk we there. That, in that okay. I don't think the size of the corporation leads to its fucking failure. I mean, plenty of small businesses. I got fail something to grab from the The size of the right? corporation leads to its fail failure necessarily. Well, it is really cool to see Rich out of jail. Looks like we're gonna walk over and enjoy some breakfast together at a restaurant called Timoleons. And uh, it's a popular place to go. It's uh, sort of like the downtown diner. And being from the Jersey Philly area, I love a good diner. So I think I'll be getting some coffee and some 
uh, maybe eggs, western omelette. Looks like there's a keen police officer over there with his lights off uh, in the car though, and uh, on his computer. Yep, can't read the plate though. So, uh, the reason I say that is because I was going to turn this recording off and um, walk over to the restaurant, but now I think I'm going to leave the recording on uh, to keep myself safe. Yep, I see he is backing out of the uh, parking space. I'm not going to be walking past him, that's for sure. So, going to be avoiding walking towards a police officer. Not because I'm doing anything illegal, but because I just don't like interacting with them. Right? So, hopefully, uh, he was just pulling over for some reason unrelated to me. I, you know, you get so paranoid when you live around here doing activism, walking through Central Square, you know. This is uh, the place where so many things have happened. This uh, famous gazebo and stone statue, they really make uh, Keene what it is. Not the Hall of Keene, you know, but the Keene visually. Of course, for this for this friend to say.